Hello, Internet. My name is Chris Buzz. Oh, I'm, okay, full name I'm, is this. Okay. Oh, shit, my name's Chris. Uh, <laughs> Chris Smith. And uh, I'm the oldest and therefore wisest of the three brothers. Okay, right. Thanks. And I've come here to add uh, a bit of sensibility to this podcast because it gets a bit silly sometimes. And, um, and just keep everyone on, a, on the ground. They've all just tuned out there. Yeah, they've gone for this. It's gonna be bullshit. <laughs> right, commence. Commence. <laughs> Welcome to um, episode four of season two of the Opium Pulses podcast. Okay, so what we're we gonna do first? We've got some stuff, haven't we? So I do my my review. And choose a new review. Oh, what are you reviewing? I am reviewing well, Dead it's... Hungry Diner. Do be be do game review. By the way, am I allowed to swear? Or is that going to get beat? Yeah, out? you can swear. Yeah. What the fuck is that? <laughs> if you listen to the other podcast, you'll see that in a in quite a specific way, we um pick a random game from Warren's library. He plays it over the week, and then when we come to the next podcast, he reviews that game. Oh yeah, I know that. Oh okay. Well, this is the game that we picked this time. It's what is it called again? Dead Hungry Diner. Dead, Dead Hungry Diner. Some kind Repeat, of zombie. What the fuck diner. is that? Some kind of zombie diner game. But you're going to find out now anyway, because Warren's going to review it. Oh, if you listen more. to uh, episode two, like you said, you had Chris. I actually gave it a bit of a mini review. No, you didn't. Like... That's in episode three, and I haven't released that yet. Shit, son. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, <What>? Sorry. <laughs> Okay, right, don't worry, Chris. The game, as spoken about in uh, episode three, is a game where you you run a diner, you run a sort of cafe for the undead. And you've basically got to feed brains to zombies um, and keep them all happy, basically keep your, your, your customer satisfaction as high as it can possibly Where are they getting these brains? They grow on the brain trees. <laughs> do they really? Yeah, they do. I wish they didn't, though, because that would have been just a good random thought. <laughs> yeah, it would have been. But... What's the method of currency that the zombies pay in? Coins. They pay Co- in coins. coins. They but they're a zombie. Coins. They've probably got change in their pocket. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, they've still got money, Chris. They're still yeah. people. Their wealth is based on right. how much they had in their pockets when they died. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And but they yeah. come in and say, two brains, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Right. There's a bit of a flaw in the game, because after a while, you know, you, you, you expand your business, you're, you're raking in the cash, and you want to you wanna sort of open it up to new customers. So you start serving werewolves and... Um, right. Is pants. there not conflict between these customer groups? There is. Have How do you... And stuff? Have you played this game, Chris? No, I'm just thinking, if that happened in the real, real world... You there got is zombies, massive conflict. You've got vampires, you've got werewolves. Are they There's... arguing about what, uh, how many brains they get? Is that what No, happens? they just don't want to be sat next to the wankers. Well, that's, that's, that's fair enough, really, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got... You, like, yeah, you're right, Chris. You have actually got to juggle them and make sure they're not sat next to each other. Oh. Um, you've also got angrier types of each particular species. So you can get a really, really angry zombie who becomes disgruntled more quickly and he wants his food quicker. So Why you've got to make sure... He's just pissed off. Pissed off with life. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. All right. So you've got to serve him quicker, which means that, you know, you're, you're doing a bit of a dis- disservice to your other customers, but you don't want him kicking up a storm. Mm, you can't just kick him out. You can, actually, I think, because yeah. you've got Frankenstein as a bodyguard. <laughs> and if there's any trouble brewing, he gets involved. <laughs> this sounds pretty good, this game. It's, <laughs> actually, it's an excellent game. I love it. Um, it's... It, Probably is more tailored to mobile phones because you basically have to tap the brain, tap the table, oh, tap the right. table again to clean up. It's a very sort of tap heavy game. Yeah. So you can tell it was made for mobiles. But it's great. It's a good little sort of casual, sort of the game your mum would play, but because it's spruced up with zombies and vampires, it's all right to play in front of your mates. So can you expand and go into more premises and things like that? 
Yeah, I mean, you start off the graveyard, and then you basically eventually have your own diner. You can build up, well, you can buy upgrades, and you can you can buy automated systems because originally you're you're bringing the, the brains to them in buckets. Why? <laughs> so, but um, I haven't played much of it. I've played maybe two or three hours, so I can't tell you like end game material. But I I think it's really good. Okay. What would you give it out of ten? Yeah. I'd give it a seven and a half. Oh, that's a good review. And I'd say it probably doesn't get an eight because I imagine that the game eventually starts to become a little bit same. A little bit tedious. Samey, yeah. Because, you know, there's not much, although, you know, more zombies and aliens come in and stuff and you've got to kind of like match them up in different areas, it's still the same premise. You've still got to do the same thing. Mm. So, but yeah, really fun. And it's okay. got, um, it's got achievements, it's got playing cards. Um, it's got cloud saves, so it's all pretty much up to date in terms of a Steam game. So worth a try. Okay, cool. Um, and it's uh, four pounds. I kind of want it now. Do be be do game review. Okay, so what do we do now? Are we picking the new game for me to play, are we? Um, yeah, we are. Yeah, and we've got two of us to do it now, so it's good. Okay, Chris, if you could pick a number between one and seventy-six. Hmm. Hmm. Let's think about this. Mm, it's just a number. 64. Oh, sake. Oh, I can right. count backwards, actually. That's better. Right, okay. Right, you choose a number then, Lewis. Uh, seven. Right. Not really got... about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> I've got to start lying. I don't want no. to just be playing a load of shit games. No, well, if you've got it on your library, don't buy shit games. I think that's the moral of the story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is what happens. Yeah. You've got to play it. Yeah, you, you're, you're paying for it now, aren't you? Tomb Raider, The Last Revelation. That's, what's wrong with that? I don't want to play some boring-ass old Tomb Raider game. I never liked it when it first came out. Well, uh, you've got to play it now, haven't you? Oh, God, it looks so shit. I've never liked the Tomb Raider games. You've never liked the mystery and the puzzles and the adventure? I'll tell you which one we did like was that one on Xbox, that co-op one. That was cool. Oh, I love that one. But yeah, I lie, actually. That two mode is amazing. Yeah. Just play it, man. I'm sure it'll be a bit of fun, even if it's only for an hour. Just play All it. Right. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to say no. I'll play it. Yeah, that's the, that's the rules. So you got to. Dems to rules. Okay. Tomb Raider next when, week. Same when, next. Did, so when did this actually come out? What's the actual year for it? I don't know, but it looks PS1, doesn't it? So it's probably... It looks, like, yeah, PS1. 2001 to 2004, I imagine. It's a good ten years old. Okay. Well, they must have done something right, or they wouldn't have kept going. Yeah, no, I, I, I think they're good games. I just they're not my type of thing. Yeah, they're not my type of game. I, I think I bought one that was brand new only about a year or two ago, and I still didn't like it. Yeah. Wow. Oh my god! It was made in 1999. No, it weren't. Shit. Don't like it. <laughs> Actually, shit. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> fine. I look forward to that review next week. Yeah, so do I. It's saggy news? Do we should we do saggy news? Oh, that, uh, yeah, okay. Well, we've got plenty, haven't we? Really. Before we commence, can you just explain the the term saggy? So, uh, saggy is one of our moderators. He's called Sagittarius, so we've okay. just called it saggy news. So why have we called the news after him? Uh, he he announces the news. Oh right, I see. The news cool. announcer on on Opium Pulses. He's like the main one, and we just discuss his news. Oh, I see. So we, it's a good way of us getting content without having to actually do the research. Yeah, yeah. Basically, we are stealing his work and, and talking about it. Right. Okay. Saggy news. Okay, first one. Uh, Microsoft purchases the rights to Gears of War, so the people who made it originally are no longer going to be making it. Oh shit! Is that? Oh, is that? Did they make the late, latest one, the Judgment? <clears throat> no. <coughs> okay. That would Otherwise... explain a lot, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, oh, okay. I mean, uh, usually I'd be pretty worried, but Microsoft bought the rights to Halo after Halo Four, and they've done a great job. So, no, before Halo Four. What other games have Microsoft bought? Uh, Fable? Yeah, and look where that went. Oh. I'm sorry, but I had to say it. Well, they didn't buy the rights to it, they just bought sort of exclusive rights to the IP. Yeah. So it's still made by Lionhead. Yeah. But Lionhead doesn't have most most of the original people in it anymore. But 
you know, it's better than Gears of War just, like, never coming out anymore. Just you know, Microsoft, uh, on another little fact, sneaky little fact, they uh, they ditched their um, their Xbox department. They now just have an entertainment department. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> fucking hell. But that tells you a lot, I think. Goodbye, <laughs> Xbox. <laughs> Right. So well, they never have a dedicated Xbox interest. department anymore, yeah. which um, is a bit worrying. Okay, well, there's not really much to say on that fact, one, so you might have to move <laughs> to another one. But are you worried about that, or are you quite excited to see how... Well, well I think I'm excited because I was worried there wasn't ever going to be a Gears of War game again. But yeah. I'm worried that they... Because I'd rather there was no game again than they ruin it. Yeah. So what happened with Judgment, then? That was just a one-off company that did that. <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, Epic was still involved with some of it, but they drafted in a few third-party companies to help out. Oh, I see. That's kind of how it worked. They wanted to just refresh it, because Gears War 3 is relatively very similar to the first one. The games are all really similar. The only difference was Horde was introduced in number two and perfected in number three. Yeah. But if you look Horde, at them as games... Horde is such a big feature that, to me, it makes it a completely different game. Yeah, yeah, I think we got the most out of we that. Spent, we spent a lot more hours on that than we did the main campaign. Yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. What a great idea. That horde was amazing. Okay, the next bit is Warner Bros. have, um, have admitted in a, in a press release that they are not going to fix the latest glitches and game-breaking bugs in Batman Arkham Origin, but they are working on new DLC. Okay. Are these bugs big bugs, or are they just... Yes, uh, some of them actually prevent you from continuing in the game, and you have to start all over. Start from the beginning of the game? Or start from that mission or that checkpoint. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure on the details. Fucking hell! But they've said that it's wasting too much resources to go after all the the glitches and the the problems that are in the game. So they're just going to push this DLC out. They've they've said whoever had it on the Wii U um, got the season pass refunded to them, and they're not going to get the DLC. So it seems like they're just literally slamming this DLC out and then just moving on. Mm. That, well, that game's had quite good reviews, hasn't it? No, not Origins, no. Oh, okay. Really bad reviews. Um, yeah. It's basically just a carbon copy of the others, basically. Yeah. Just a quick little information for people that don't know. People that follow this news on the um, the once Opium Pulses community group, the group has now changed name to Opium Pulses News, which was reported by me on um, in February. So um, if, you're, if you're worrying or wondering why you're getting announcements from a group you've never heard of before oh, we so change worried. the name. So worried. Were you worried? So, I was traumatised. Well, at least you know now. Put his mind to rest now. I can sleep now. Thank God for that. Dungeon Keep has been released on Android, but not the Dungeon Keeper you know. I've heard that it's a piece of shit. Oh, it's awful. It's so awful. Have you actually played it? Yeah, I downloaded it because I thought, uh, even though the reviews were were bad anyway, that because I love Dungeon Keep so much, it'd be something I'd like in it. But I hate it. It's just a... freemium game where literally everything you do you know those those free to play games where when you're building like a building or something you have to wait three minutes or or you can just pay to uh, to oh, erase yeah. those three minutes of waiting it's literally that all over it's there's just a lot of them, games like that though it's them trying to just make money isn't it it's just there is a lot of games cheap. like that but they don't use existing like loved um, franchises by people that have been waiting yeah. for for a sequel for years and years and years and then push out a shitty freemium game aimed at nine-year-olds. I'm just Google imaging it. The graphics are pretty cool. <laughs> Have you downloaded it, Lewis? No, I, I avoided it because everybody was saying it was shit. I'm downloading this. I'd like to this. raid your dungeon, to be honest. Just You'd like to raid it, would you? Yeah. All right, I'd better buy it. some gold coins then. <laughs> Add ge- gems, gems. Oh, gems, sorry. So that's the only reason you don't like it, is because you've got to wait for stuff to be... No, know. no, it's, it's just nothing like the original game at all. You can't free build rooms. You have to have set size, and you put them where you need to go. You have to you have to actually wait for your imps to break down um, walls. And if you've only got two imps, you can only choose to break down two walls. If you choose to say like, "Oh, I want that wall broken down after you've finished," it will say, "No, wait until your imps are finished, and then choose to build." So if you wanted to say, "Open up a room, and then a room to the left, and then a room to the north," you'd have to watch them do it. You can't, like, you know, because when you usually play Dungeon Keeper, you're, like, building rooms all over the place and setting up traps and everything all at one time. You're basically micromanaging a dungeon. Yeah. In this one, you have to watch them do it in real time. Okay. That's can you not leave the game and come back in a bit? Yeah, you can do that, yeah. But I think that they had to do that to make it that freemium way, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. They did, yeah. yeah. And you know why they're making games like this now? It's just to stop piracy and people, you know, just 
the old mobile games that you used to pay for, you know, people were getting them illegally and downloading them, and then the developers were making no money whatsoever. But yeah. this way, you can't get around it. They're yeah. giving it away free, so there's there's no issue there. And then to make their money, they charge for optional things. And I kind of I see why they've done it, and I I can't be really angry with them. Because if they didn't do this, we probably wouldn't see a lot of games like this but at they all. Didn't, they, what, I think the point is they didn't need to do that to Dungeon Keeper. That's the thing. I've got nothing against those games. They work. I like them. I play uh, them. You don't need to do it to something that fans have been waiting 10 years for. Mm. And a real sequel as well. They've got the IP. They've sat on it for 15 years. You've got other developers, indie developers, making games that people have been waiting for, like War for the Overworlds and... And, and other things like that. And then when EA actually do release something that fans have been waiting 15 years for, they release that tripe. It's just a kick in the face, that's all. Mm. The, ga- the game is fine. If it, if it wasn't Dungeon Keeper, I might enjoy it. If it was called, like, Dungeon Face. If it was called <laughs> Dungeon Face, if it was called Dungeon Face, I'd play it. It doesn't quite have the same ring to it, does it? No, I do like it, though. Dungeon Face. Okay, moving on. Um... <laughs> Bastards. Please do. Can- Candy Crush developers called King. Um, have you heard that they've basically been trying to sue every company that uses the word either candy or sign? Yeah. That's old news. You've already said that, haven't you? Yeah, but this news is about the the, the, the original developer of a game called Candy Swipe that oh, wow. um, released their game two years before Candy Crush. Uh, he's a family man. He's uh, This is his first successful app. It's done really well. He has to deal with people all over the world that call it a Candy Crush rip-off, even though it came out before. Fine. And now, now the developers of Candy Crush are trying to rip the trademark away from it. From they're him. trying to, yeah, they're trying to basically budge their way through and say this was our game. Right. I mean, if you look at the website, if you, can you get that link and, and send it? Yeah. It's, it it looks identical. But surely they, Candy Crush guys, won't have a legal leg to stand on. No, I think they've actually packed, they've, because of the really bad um, press they've got, they've, yeah. they've stopped doing it now. It just shows that they want, they want to make as much money as they can, and anybody that hinders that, they're, but they're they've made to... a lot of money. They, they need to stop being so greedy, I think, now. Yeah, I That's think it. they do, yeah. Because yeah. people will start rebelling and just not buying anything from them. Yeah. Um, what else have we got there, then? Assassin's Creed board game coming out. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, that's it. It's moving on. Yeah, there's we'll no point to talk about that. that. I mean, what can you say about that? Harmonics, the people are, that made Guitar Hero and Rock Band are making a first-person shooter. Um, <laughs> oh, right, okay. Um, that's going to be shit, isn't it? <laughs> oh, here we go. So the people behind uh, Telltale Games, the people that made Walking Dead and Wolf Among Us, you won't know about it, Lewis, but I'm assuming you've completed Walking Dead of you, Chris. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they're making a Borderlands game called The Tales from the Borderlands. What the hell? Are yeah. they allowed to do that? Yeah, they've secured the IP and they're going to make it like a point and click game like the Walking Dead franchise. Oh, I see. It's going to be a point and click. In, yeah, but set in the Borderlands world that just tells you the story of all the characters and stuff. Okay. Okay. How's that a game? Well, the same way that the Walking Dead game was a game. Oh, so it's going to be story driven like that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's some quite elaborate characters in um, Borderlands. If you think of, like, Scooter and Moxie and stuff, you could make stories based on those characters. Yeah, I wish there was a bit, there was being a more original, though, because Walking Dead was really original. There was nothing like it. Yeah. But, um, Borderlands has kind of, well, it's been done, I think. It's been done a lot. Yeah, yeah I suppose so. Would you huh? buy it, though? Um, depends how much, I suppose. Yeah. And, and what the reviews are like. I'll definitely have a look at it. Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't think, if any, if anything, they would pick Borderlands to make a story-based game on. Yeah. Because you don't play Borderlands for the story, do you? There's, a little, bit, there's a little bit of story. Yeah, it's there. Like, oh, he's pissed you off, is he? Right, I'll go and kill him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you but go, That's why him. the game is great, whereas The Walking Dead was great not because there were zombies, but because the story was amazing. Yeah, it was it draw, draw, draw you into the story, didn't it? And it yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how that works. They're basically taking a game that's not story based and making okay. it. Okay. Well, yeah. I wish them the best of luck. We'll uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, the new Wolfenstein com- uh, game is coming out, and they've confirmed that if you pre-order it, you get to play the Doom Four beta. What? Oh. So it, Doom Four is confirmed. Shit. 
Alright. Are you going to play that, Chris? I'll give it a little goey. Fucking... I'll, I might give it a little goey as well. Is your, is your laptop be able to handle that? Oh, man. <laughs> It would just look at the title and go, fuck off. <laughs> All right. Install it instantly. Yeah. You pick install. You're having a laugh. I like the way that my, my laptop's so shit, I can't even control it. It just does its own shit. Yeah. When you take the piss, it does. But I've, ne- I've never played any Wolfensteins beyond Wolfenstein 3D. But I think I'd, I think I'd play it if I got to play Doom 4. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Anyway, what is next? Still got fucking five pages to go. Opium Pulses officially becomes a company. Now, we haven't really discussed this, have we? But there's not much to say about it apart from the fact that Opium Pulses have just become a company. Yep. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty big event. Yeah. Well, for us, I suppose. It is a big event, but what I'm saying is there's not much discussion to be had. No. It was necessary to do because we launched the store, so we're now Opium Pulses Limited um, LTD, actually, isn't it? Does that sound for Limited? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's not, there's not much, not much to go on basically. If you want to know more about it, then the announcement basically gives you our certificate of, um, companyness. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the official term. That's the official term. So. <laughs> that's what it says at the top of the certificate. <laughs> Here's my of companyness. In your companyness. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, Peter Molyneux, uh, admits that Fable 3 was a complete train wreck. There's nothing to say there as well, really, because he's right. Done. Yeah, but it's just nice to hear a bit of it's honesty. To hear him, yeah, just admit it. I don't know what he, I feel like. There might be some other intentions around that quote. I don't feel like he's just saying it because he needs to say it. Well, he wasn't part of the development of Fable Three, so I think. Ah, right pretty... there you go. He's just yeah. like, <laughs> can't lick his own balls. I... <laughs> <laughs> we all know how hard that is. <laughs> uh, well, he's trying his best, bless him, but you know, I wish him luck. Um, South Park, the new South Park game, uh, The Stick of Truth, is censored in Europe and Australia on consoles, but not on PC. What the hell? And I'm not sure whether Europe means the UK as well. Well, what's it uncensored um, for? Um, basically, um, anal probe scenes. And oh, that's like 10 years old. Yeah, characters. I know. That's been on TV, so why can't it be on a game? I don't know. There's a few... Uh, I think actually it might go into it. Um, seven scenes have been removed, which equates to about 20 seconds of centred material. Um, uh, they consist of a mini-game where a doctor is performing an... A, is performing an anal abortion on a player. What the oh, fuck? Okay, well, I'm starting to understand now. Um, and also, uh, the Doctor performs an abortion on Stan's dad, Randy, and five separate scenes in which characters are actively probed. <laughs> I, I want to play I mean, this game so bad. Oh, no, me too. I, it makes me want to play it more. But the thing is, like, what I don't understand, I don't understand the probing. I do understand the anal abortion, though. That is quite <laughs> brutal. <laughs> pretty brutal. Yeah, probing is old news. Yeah, yeah. That's been done. Anal abortion, that's brand new. I've that's, never I've heard never of that. Heard, I've never heard of that. That's, <laughs> that's blown my mind. I mean, anal, anal probing. You know, people have prostate exams all the time. Yeah, but no one's ever had an anal abortion. Is that <laughs> probing, though? I think probing's a bit deeper. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, going okay. right up there with a big stick. That's going right up into your insides. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's okay. your core. Well, I'm hoping. I mean, we are European, but we're we're just sort of not in their camp half the time. There's barely any games in the UK that have been banned. That's not banned, is it? Censored. Yeah, but I don't think there's been any that have been censored either. Yeah. Even even when um, Manhunt was was banned, the UK still still allowed it. Yeah. I don't get censoring games. All it does is make it more popular. Yeah, and it makes everyone go out and try and get the uncensored. Yeah, it makes coverage. me want the game more. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just, you're, you're you're advertising the game more, and you're giving it more publicity. Yeah, you're saying this is so mental. We need to censor it. Well, can I have it then? Can yeah. I have that? I need it. That's why. Um, that's why Postal Two was so huge because it was banned in like 32 countries. Mm. You don't ban a game in 32 countries and people just go, oh, okay. Yeah, you I know, won't play that then. Play that. Yeah. If you're telling me that's. Uh, no, that's too bad for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I think you know I what's in my best interest. Yeah. So I will not be buying that game. <laughs> when has anyone said that? 
That's why Steam is so great. Do you know that you can buy any banned game in your country as long as it's on Steam? Can you? Yeah. yeah. Like Postal 2 is banned in 32 countries. You can buy it anywhere. Well, I don't know how you get away with that. I don't know. But it's got to be picked up at some point because people can buy Doom and Wolfenstein in Germany. Yeah. Yeah, and we all know what that what happened there. We'll leave that. Yeah. Uh, the Xbox One has been nominated as... Uh, Oh, actually, no, Chosen is the product of the year 2014. Oh. What, do, what do you think about that, Chris? What's, what other products are in this category? Let me read on. Let me... <laughs> oh. Good to know. It's just the Xbox and uh, a toaster. Then <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going yeah. to be the Xbox. I think there's not, like, nominations. I think they're just saying that is their product of the year. Who's this, sorry? GameSpot. Okay. Might be a bit of BIOS going on, might be a bit of money being sort of low-balled, I don't know, but... Yeah, well, if it's just between the Xbox and PlayStation, then that's not really much of a comparison, but okay. Yeah, there's, there's probably not much in that, to be honest. No. Just, uh, yeah, just briefly, uh, Diablo 3 has recently made a massive patch, um, which also includes a lot of new features, but it also um, completely reworks the way characters, difficulties and bosses work. So if you had achievements for killing bosses before, you don't have them anymore. They Uh, took away achievements? No, the achievements exist. You just need to regain them. What? So they they took it... Yeah, so they took your achievement away. Yeah. I mean, if you... Beating Belial... Is that legal? (laughs) (laughs) I earned that. I earned it. Beating, like, Diablo or Belial when the game first came out is a completely different feat to beating him now. It's a completely different thing. They make a new achievement. You you killed the new boss. Yeah. Yeah, that is out of order. It's almost stealing. That's stealing. I earned that in my hard earned time. Which is money. I should change that to Diablo theft. Yeah. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Diablo steals your time. Yeah. Well, you guys are not happy about this, are you? No, I'm not. I can't believe you're, you're so relaxed about it. No, no, I can't. It's a, normally, this would be something you'd be freaking out about. You're just like, what's up, guys? What's going on? Whoa, whoa. If it was Xbox achievements, oh, I'd be burning them at stake. <laughs> um, but but, you, you, but really you've got care. to see this from other people's perspectives. You know, they I'm, might see I'm these achievements as as important as you see Xbox achievements. Yeah. Yeah. It's just I'm there. quite excited to actually fight all those bosses again and get the achievements again. I'm That's not. Fair. I've done that. I've been there and I've done yeah. it. Oh, okay. Sorry guys. That's pissed me off. Yeah, <laughs> I am I'm never I'm not playing it anymore. That's it. The expansion pack can go fuck it. it can. Some people are reporting that if you kill the first boss all the achievements flood back in, but I'm not I'm not sure on that. But why would so, they do that? That makes no sense. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a glitch. Maybe it's not actually them taking it away well, from Well, they've you. lost two customers, that's for sure. Yeah. Forever. <laughs> uh, clans and communities. So you can have a clan um, where you can basically have people request whether they're allowed to be in the clan or not. Um, you're only allowed to be in one of them at a time. And then you can have communities that are basically the same as Steam groups. Um, me and Lewis have already made a few for Opium Pulses and a few others. Um, but it basically makes um, signing up with your mates and finding a lot of people on Diablo as friends a lot easier to play with. So, so you've got no a... achievements, but you can have a clan. Oh, the achievements are still there. There's loads of new ones as well. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, new achievements, you say? Yes. Brand new ones. Spankers. We'll have to review the, um, the, the expansion pack when we play it. Yep. There's actually none left, so we're done. Lucky news! <laughs> Oh, fuck, I need slips on a fact. Nearly. You nearly did. Oh, okay. Oh, so okay, we don't need to know that fact. Oh, I've got to slip on it. On it. Oh, what happened, Chris? What happened? Oh. Did you slip on a fact? Yeah, really oh, my arm. well, you might as well read it out. Oh, my arm. Oh. <laughs> you are dragging this out way too long. <laughs> I don't know how long I'm supposed to do it for, but seriously. No, that's fine, that's fine. Just tell us the god. Oh, a lot of ways complaining about his arm. Right, have you have you guys heard about the, the tramp from uh, Grand Theft Auto? No. No, go on. Right. Uh, apparently Grand Theft Auto three, 
there was a there's a ho- homeless guy who got removed from the game. What? Oh, I really yeah. like that idea of a homeless person. And his his name was Darkal, and okay. he's <laughs> you, you got you got this homeless guy. All he wanted was a bit of loose change, and you said, "All right, I'll give you some money. You got to do something for me." Oh, okay. Can you think what that might be? Oh. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> it's not what you're thinking. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is it then? I don't know. Jesus. <laughs> you were to, uh, you gave him some uh, explosives and you said you got to go and rig some buildings with explosives. Oh my God, I've heard of this. Yeah, we and, did, uh, this, did this last it, week. You've talked about this last week. Yeah. We did, uh, I didn't know it was a tramp. You I didn't know it was a tramp. It. We did discuss last week that there was oh, a off after a 9-11. Yeah, it was, well, that, I think they made it just before 9-11 and then yeah, obviously yeah. it happened and they thought, shit, we need to scrap this homeless guy. And yes, you know, so, that's uh, also why they made the plane unflyable in the game. Yeah. Oh, really? You can you can just about fly that plane in GTA 3, but they completely stripped it of all its flyability to to stop people just oh. flying into buildings and recording it and putting it on YouTube and laughing. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is that that is, is what people would do, isn't it? Oh, I thought you were gonna say that's funny then. It is funny. Well, uh, I think they, they should. They should be... What? <laughs> that's not funny. I just like to do this. He goes to talk about Hitler, Jews, tsunamis, uh, terrorist attacks. Yeah, well. Right. Don't we have American uh, listeners listening to this? Yeah, yeah. Do you not feel bad, Lewis? I was saying it was funny. How? Uh, what? No. <laughs> oh, my God. How are thousands of people dying funny? No, I mean people going on the game and flying into a building. That would be funny. Okay, right. Right, moving on. I'm not saying millions of deaths are funny. Right. Depends on the circumstances, though, really. Wow. <laughs> anyway, I think they should have kept this guy, because I think he could have had another use. Yeah, they, they didn't have to go scrap the tramp. Well, the tramp's not the problem. No, a friendly tramp in a game. Yeah. That's never really been done. They should, we should have, it should have been what we suspected you were talking about. Right. Been... <laughs> yeah, you can have some money. <laughs> they had a scene like that in San Andreas, didn't they? Didn't they? <clears throat> what, with so, the tramp? I think you pay a prostitute <laughs> and you... Oh, prostitute, yeah. Every, every GTA's got prostitutes in it. Yeah. It's yeah. like a full-on sex scene. It's not just like GTA 3. There was actually prostitutes that you could buy, but all it did was have a, a camera behind a car, and the car just bounced up and down. Yeah. And what, if you got on the side angle, you could actually see both of you just sat in your seat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. It was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love GTA 3. I like the fact you can beat it up afterwards and take your money yeah, back. Take yeah, your money know. back. To, I think that was all over the internet where it was saying yeah. it were sleeping with prostitutes and then killing them and stealing the money back. <laughs> You're doing this clearing up the world though, aren't you? Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Getting rid of the scum. free as well. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> People, man, they've got families. <laughs> no, they hadn't. Oh, yeah. Well, well, they might have, but they just give them up straight afterwards. Social services take them all. <laughs> yeah, social services have got their family. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! Right, next fact. Did you know Super Mario World took 29,000 hours to program? Can we put that into, like, days or years or something? Oh, I don't no. know what that means. Let me just stick that in a little calculator. 59,000, did you say? 29,000 hours. So 29,000. 24. So that's 1,200 days of pure programming. Oh, my God. Yeah. And if you split that, no one's going to program for more than 12 hours, are they? So... That's probably about two and a half thousand days the programming. That's like five or six years just to program in. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Jesus um, Christ. Because obviously back then it, it was more it was all programming, wasn't it? You didn't have software so much to make things easy for you. Yeah. It was all code. But it did go on to sell seventeen million copies, so it was kind of <laughs> oh, okay. worth it. It was worth it. It could yeah. have been the yeah. biggest flop in the world, ended up being a success. Oh, I've got a little fallout fact. You you heard this fallout yeah, fact? Yeah, go on, go on, go on, go on. In the in the apparently in the first Fallout, you've played this, haven't you, Warren? The first Fallout, yes, I did a review. Oh, maybe maybe you know this. I don't. Maybe you didn't. Oh, I died when I got to the Scorpions. <laughs> Lewis, <laughs> sorry. Fucking stupid little Scorpions killed you. All right. In the first Fallout, when you create your character, if you create him with less than four intelligence. You just can't converse with anyone. You can't talk. <laughs> your, your, your only dialogue options are various grunts and other noises. 
How do you get through the game? This makes the game insanely difficult to finish. Oh, but that'd be great to finish it. So that's kind of a super hard nightmare mode, I suppose. Yeah. Just make you your character. It. You can you can do it, but it's insanely difficult. They must have known going into the game that they were developing it with the ability to complete it without any sort of language skills. They yeah. must have known that. Well, they've made that game. They make the character grunt instead of talking. So he's not he's not clever enough to know words. But every decision they made in the game, they must have been like, wait a minute, can you do this by grunting? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we got that. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. They just made it hard for themselves. Mm. That is amazing. Another little fact. Did you know oh. StarCraft is the first ever game that actually physically made it into space? Well, why the did they bring Star- it into space? The original StarCraft. They uh, they put it on a, on a shuttle in 1999. So it's quite an old game, obviously. By an astronaut. He was a StarCraft fan. He loved it. And he thought, I'm bringing it into space with me. What? He played it? He played it. He played the game in space. Well, I wonder if all of his like tanks and stuff like floated into the air. Fucking dick. Yeah, the Gabe thought, shit, I'm in space. <laughs> <laughs> Drop gravity. Was if you were stuck in space, you know, you're going to get pretty bored after a while. You probably want to yeah, it again. They must have a lot of free time on their hands. Yeah. Well, they do. You've got to wait like, I don't know, six months to get to Mars or something, haven't you? Yeah. Wait. I think it's a couple of years. Yeah, I think you're right. To get to Mars. No one's gone to Mars. Yeah, this is in 1999 as well. They barely got to the moon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can I give you my news now? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, Chris is news. It's, um, I don't know if you know this or not. It's been in the news a couple of weeks, but um, it might be new to you. As you know, I work for Huawei, and um, we're bringing out our own console. Fuck off. <laughs> you fucking serious? <laughs> I mean, I you're know. laughing. That's yeah, the- I couldn't believe it. I was so happy. This is bullshit. Console. This has got to be bullshit. It is not bullshit. And guess what it's called? Go on. The Tron. Ooh. No, it's not called The Tron. It's just called Tron. Tron. That's actually a really good name. It's a good name, isn't good it? Good name, but uh, do they really think they're going to be able to compete with people that have been in the console business for a very long time? Uh, I'd buy one. I'm fucking sick well, of it. Can, I, can I just tell you a little bit about it before you start buying it? First of all, right. what, oh. have they gone for a Western name on purpose? Like, what the, all their other names and stuff, they're all so, like, hard to say. Yeah. Well, it seems like they've gone for that for a reason. Well, no, I don't think so, because they initially they're only going to launch it in China and see how well it does, and then they'll then they'll release it worldwide. Them, then. Yeah, oh. so I don't think they've gone for a Western name on purpose. Yeah. Um, anyway, let me tell you a bit about it. So, Pat, this is, this is the really interesting bit, because it's very different to other consoles out there so has no physical media drive whatsoever so there's no disc no um cartridge or anything like that it's all kind of cloud based okay. now this, this has a couple of benefits obviously price is one and also apparently it's going to have the ability to play multi-format games so you'll be able to play playstation games ps3 games pc games and nintendo ds games whoa how is that allowed this sounds like bollocks no, that's what's going to happen. How is that allowed? Well, I think there's, they're, they're talking through the licensing issues at the moment with each of uh, with Sony and so forth. Um, but it has the ability to do it. They've already got games that on all those platforms that work that so can physically do it. It's just whether it, they can legally do it. Um, they're, they're still working through those those issues. But going back to price, this you, this this console that plays all those games will cost ninety pounds. Which is about for the for the American listeners about hundred and twenty dollars. It's got HDMI port so you can play H D games. Uh, it's got two controllers with touch sensitive kind of pads on the, on them. And uh they're they're connected by Bluetooth. And uh you can have either sixteen or thirty two gigabyte internal memory and uh and it's got two gigabyte gigabytes of RAM. So there you go. It's um, still in testing phases. It obviously hasn't been released yet, but it was announced and it actually held the product at, at Mobile World in Barcelona. And um, unfortunately, they didn't have it hooked up. They, it wasn't, the software wasn't ready, which is really annoying. 
but I held the held the controllers, which did feel really nice, and the device itself, which is tiny. It's What's like... the controllers like? <coughs> Google Image Tron. This is this is really surprising to me. But I suppose now that you can make just Android consoles, everybody's going to jump on the bandwagon. There is. There's like six or seven of them announced already. Yeah. But I do like the idea of a future where consoles are small. Yeah. Because it's all cloud-based. There's no... Yeah. So I mean, this future... will be using your internet as as the hardware. Is that right? I don't... Mm, I don't think oh. so. Well, don't how think how is it powering these games then? So it's only running PC, uh, PlayStation 3 games, remember. So that doesn't need a lot of power to, for a start. The, the hardware inside here will suffice. And um, it also it won't run PC games at their full graphical power, but it'll run at kind of medium settings. But then it's a 90 quid console, so it's great for, you know, emerging markets and, you know, people that can't afford a 500 quid console. It's really metro. I want, I want it. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you'd like it or not. I'd, I'd, I could, that'd just be lovely, just next to my TV. Just sat there. Yeah. Are you getting any of these, Chris? Well, I, I, hopefully I'll be able to get a, get a couple when when it's actually released. And so, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll be selling that on our website next week. <laughs> well, we try. Right? It's not available anywhere else in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Might get a few phone calls, Chris. So where, where are these being released? So initially just China. For how long? So I think they want to see if it's successful or not. How many do they want to sell before they'll start considering? I don't know the specific details. <laughs> if I worked in China, I might know, but I don't, unfortunately. I work for the UK team. So, um, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of people in China, so they probably want to sell quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and it they might sell well, I suppose. It might sell. A 90 quid console. But they can yeah, have there's lots system. of them. It's sat, they're pretty saturated now. There's a lot of people doing this. Yeah. And I don't think they're the first to play PS3 and PC games either. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I think there's a few other consoles, one called the Stick or something, that does the exact same thing. I don't really know what they've got that's unique here. Oh, I thought it was completely unique. No. The controller is awesome. Yeah, the controller is nice. I don't quite understand how you'd use the middle touchpad, though. No, neither do I. Maybe like a mouse for like a browser or something. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Seems I mean, pretty pointless. Obviously, the PS4's got that as well, hasn't they? So they must have some good use for it. Mm. But, um, yeah, you know, I don't know what it is. Looks cool. It's got a good name. I like the name. It seems to look really slick and professional. Hopefully it'll sell. It, it's, it, but are they doing really well in, like, China? Huawei does, yeah. It's the number one phone and tablet manufacturer in China. Oh, OK. So they're, they're absolutely massive. Oh, yeah, so, you can also expand the, the, the console's memory by a micro SD card. It's <laughs> pretty cool. They should have done that a long time ago for consoles, shouldn't they, really? Yeah. Let's hope it succeeds, I think. We need, we need more competition in the market. Yeah, especially stuff like this, because consoles are yeah. way too expensive. Yeah, exactly. Stuff like this is, is a good idea. I don't like... I mean... I wouldn't use it as a primary <laughs> console because I, I like something with a DVD. I like yeah. I like to be able to watch. Yeah, DVDs. it wouldn't be a primary console, but it'd be a nice sort of just on the side, and you can just jump on play. I'd use it probably for indie games, I reckon. Yeah, me too. Yeah, if it's Android based, then that's what it's going to be for, isn't it? Really. Yeah. So I would love something like this. I would love something that I can play indie games on on my as a console rather than playing them on my PC. Yeah. Dead Trigger Two is that an indie game? That's yeah. quite a big one, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's an indie game, is it? Okay. That's one of the initial launches. Do you want a question that you don't know the answer to? How do you know I don't know the answer? You don't know the answer to this question. Because you're not supposed to, Chris. That's the name of the game. Lewis does it very well. You might know the answer to this question. That's not the name of the game. You might do. (laughs) I think we need to change the name. You probably don't know the answer. Lewis is going to ask a question that we may or may not know the answer to. That's, that's, that's more accurate, that is. Okay, right, go on then. The penguins have knees. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, just give me a little second to think about this. <laughs> what do you mean, Google it? Is that what no. you mean? No. <laughs> do penguins have knees? They don't look like they've got knees. Imagine one, like, running, <laughs> bending its knees. Right. Yeah, when they walk, they sort of shimmy, don't they? They do, as if they they don't have knees. I think a penguin has knees. <laughs> no, 
God damn. Chris just went away into a corner and yeah. sort of contemplated. I just thought I just contemplated. Why don't they? Why don't they use their knees then? Too cold. <laughs> I walk like that when I'm freezing. <laughs> you do actually, don't you? Yeah. And you all your muscles they're, tense up. They're too far down. They're too far down. Yeah, <laughs> They definitely don't have knees. I reckon they've just got straight legs, and that's just how they have to walk. I'd okay. like to see an X-ray of a penguin. I've seen the um, the skeleton, and it's really weird. It is fucked up. That is a fucked it's up. Just nothing bird. like you'd expect it to. It looks like a chicken. How did that bird evolve? Look at it. Well, there you go. Scroll down on that. You can see an X-ray of a. Of a... Oh, let's have a look at this penguin's knees. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> look at that skeleton. That's so messed up. That is that is weird, isn't it? So they're actually very high up. I love the fact that there's a box with an arrow. But the problem is, their knees are almost at the start of their leg. So they yeah. use their knees very much, but it's only to move their whole leg. Just below their hips. Yeah. yeah. Well, fucking hell. So I'm almost, they almost don't have a knee. That would make you waddle. It'd be like walking on stilts, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Yeah. Your knees are so high up. Yeah. Okay, well, we've we've actually answered one of the questions. <laughs> Penguins, penguins <laughs> have knees. That's actually a first. That is a first, yeah. <laughs> that's fucked that game up then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that, that, that is the end of it. We've killed it yeah, now. it. We've killed it. Now we've got an answer to one of the questions. Lewis, ask a question that we knew the answer to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, right, in in India, in a place called Japur, 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 <laughs> oh god, Move on. This, this person called uh, Alexander Gorliski, Gorliski, <laughs> <laughs> had uh, two goats that he used to walk around his local village with um, chains as a lead. And these two goats, they were a bit feisty and stuff, and they got a little bit randy. And uh, they pulled Are off... Are they brother and sister? The goats. Yeah. Yeah. Probably probably likely, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So they got a bit randy festival. together. Yeah. He let the leads go, so they'd carry on. He let them their... carry on? Whoa. Oh, you can't get in the way of a goat, can you? Is that even legal? Yeah. Is it legal to make two animals have sex with one of their siblings? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why? For people, but not animals. Yeah, that's not fair. That doesn't seem right. No, they've just got they've just got more more freedom. They have, haven't they? Yeah, more freedom of choice. Or 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 less choice, I suppose. Well, what happens when a goat comes out with two heads? <laughs> there's there's who's there's... gonna look after that? There's less mutation rate in animals, isn't there? I'll tell you what mutation. happens when a goat comes out with two heads. There's more goat news. <laughs> oh, true. It's beneficial to us. Yeah. Not the far, poor farmer, though. He's got two mouths to feed. <laughs> for only one goat as well. It does a job of one goat. Exactly. Get half the value for his money. No, it's got two udders. <laughs> two heads, two udders, one body. Right. <laughs> Made up a random goat. Two uddered goats. Anyway, um, right, so uh, he did that. One of the village people got a bit offended, uh, kicked one of the goats up the arse. Oh. So they both ran oh. off. Oh. They can't blame the goat, blame the farmer. Uh, he did blame the farmer, but in a blazing row, he said, you know, it's not my fault. And he said, he said something. Something was said. He got pissed off, kicked the goat up the arse. Right, what did the goat say? The goats, the go- what did the goat say? <laughs> Don't give me that shit, Warren, after all your goat needs. God, Lewis, goats don't talk. <laughs> right, go on. But they said something that remotely sounded like wanker and ran away. Right, okay, uh, okay, yeah, okay. In in India, uh, in some of the more poverty-stricken areas, they don't have washing machines, Lewis. Okay. Uh, so they put their clothes up on lines. These goats, they ran through the clothes on the line, and when they came out on the other side, they were fully dressed. Fully dressed goats. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it sounds like a cartoon, bloke, but okay. This bloke <laughs> was a bit of a sort of aspiring entrepreneur, so he decided to make a new fashion label called Goatsy Wearies. 
Don't see where he's. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, what? What was his product? <laughs> Goat clothes. <laughs> <laughs> this is absolute bollocks. There's not even one percent truth in this. <laughs> How can I make this up, Chris? How can I fucking That's make this up? That's the only thing you could do is make this up. <laughs> you started making clothes for goats. Yeah, and it fucking blew up. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I've been there. G- clothesforgoats.com. Um, apparently, um, he's been criticised because someone did it with Shetland ponies. Um, oh, right, OK. In the UK um, a couple of years back. Right. And made a lot of money. And he, he, people are just saying, you know, you're doing it with goats. It's nothing... Nothing special. Nothing new, yeah. Um, but then a new uh, line came out, and it was um, um, a sweater, a sweater for goats in the colder climates. And uh, people loved it. People just went crazy over it. They went absolutely crazy over it. Right. Every every goat in the town had a sweater on. Pretty much, yeah, in the colder weathers. And then when they didn't, they just had a little pair of hot pants on or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so they could go swimming, assumably, yeah? So in the yeah. poor little village in India where they can barely eat they're buying sweaters for their goats <laughs> yeah it's all, it's all the rich it's, people something <laughs> seems fucked up there <laughs> sorry child I can't feed you today but uh old goatee's warm out yeah there. the billy's warm so don't yeah, worry Billy's about it <laughs> <laughs> he's more than prepared to provide us with milk now that he's got a little he's got a little, little coat on yeah yeah a nice little petty coat yeah he's loving it panties on his booty um, would you would you like to see some of the clips from the fashion show? Oh my yes, god, yes, definitely. There you go, Fashion Week and goats from ModernFarmer.com, trusted source. That's just a rug. Uh, uh, it's India, man. These it's people. Like are... a, it's like an old mechanic's rag. If you go down, there's one in a onesie. Oh god, there is. He, that goat looks fucking happy as well. <laughs> he's he's, he's like a cat on his face. Face. This, this is fucking ridiculous. This is actually a true story. This is the 2014 line. So you're looking at the most recent line of um, of wear. I'll admit, they do look like um, adapted human clothes. Well, that's where it originated from, Chris. I'm not right. sure they're happy about it. If you look at the last picture, I'm sure he's trying to get that top off. No, he's having a little gnaw on those leaves. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't see any in hot pants. It's just that, Well, no, that's... Last year's line. Is it? And oh. also, it doesn't seem cold in any of these pictures. If anything, no, it would... Just, this is this year's line. It's summer in India. I've noticed oh. that on one of the pictures, he's also trying to get some shoes on. Yes. Yeah. What? Think, uh, yeah. Yeah. Look. Have a look. I think it's the second... Oh, yeah. Picture. There it is. Here with the little boy there. He's just accepting that he's got a goat with clothes on behind him. Yeah. He's not phased at all, is he? No, he's not. He's like... Uh, uh, he's sitting there going, that used to be my fucking jumper. <laughs> <laughs> see these pictures <laughs> we'll have to put this link up with the podcast <laughs> oh that is great we should do that every time I should source goat news every time we do an announcement yeah it should do yeah so can I have a, an apology guys well I'm not going to apologise no because it is still shit what are you talking about There's, there is numerous evidence right here look at this this is fucking stupid can't believe, look, you can see that they're living in poverty, yet they've yeah. got a goat with a fucking jumper on. Oh, I can't believe, I mean, most of the time, Warren's, Warren's news is, there's no, there's no website to look at, so you're actually privileged here, Chris, he's actually got a source. Yeah. And it looks like it's actually true. I mean, I'm not going to say that everything he said is true. What are you talking about? I'm not going to say that it blew up, and uh, everybody is now buying, I mean, actually... It looks like it, doesn't it? I mean, there's many goats here with many different types of clothing. It's... Lewis, it was in New York's Fashion Week. You can't tell me it didn't blow up. It's gone to New York. Yeah. But what, who in New York has got a goat? Alexander Goliske. <laughs> you, you're saying it like I should know him. He's a, he's a big bloke that does fashion and huh? that. Right, well, that's good then. There's go news. We're going to have to put these links with them because we can't just sit here talking about this without them knowing it. There's another link here. Goats in sweaters. Yeah, here you go. Here's some of the proper fashion. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let me give this to Chris. We're gonna... Oh, my God. I can see it. I can see it. Oh, I've got the second one. The second one. We're getting all gangster with them. 
there's two pictures down a little bit lower where he's looking away, and then the second one he's looking at the camera so chuffed with himself. <laughs> yeah, I've just, just got for that. He's like posing, isn't he? So chuffed. What they do need is to have their hooves trimmed so that they can walk properly. Not a sweater! Fucking <laughs> hell! It's true, though, to be honest. Yeah, it is a little bit true, but Jesus! I mean, one of them's in a puffer jacket! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anyway, let's stop All looking. Right. Anyway, don't news. Verified. <laughs> news! So let's just speak generally because we don't know when this episode's going to go live. So well, since it's gone live, we've already released two bundles. Yep. Yep. That's we released the big sense. budget bundle and the All Aliens Must Die bundle. Both sold out in under 24 hours. Yeah. So I think that's a clear indication that we'll, we'll probably continue to do them when we find opportunities to, to get bundles out. And also it's a sign that when we do release a bundle, buy it quick, otherwise it'll go. Yeah. Yeah. That we really don't have the sort of immediate funds to buy thousands of copies so yeah. they are quite limited and um, we've also released gift codes so you can now buy um five dollar ten dollars twenty dollars and fifty dollars worth of credit for our store um as gifts for your friends or your family or even for yourself for a later time um just like you would say buy a high street supermarket gift card or something like that so check that out and we've also got games now for sale on the Uplay, Battle.net, PlayStation, Xbox, Desert Origin, and Steam platforms. So we've got games to sell across all of those platforms now. Should we talk about new games that we've got on there, or what? I, I will say that we did some of our most requested games, like Borderlands 2 and uh, The Walking Dead, have been added to the store. So if you were one of the people that requested or wanted those games on the store, they're now there. We've got a limited quantity again, so we're not sure how long they're going to stay up there for. Yeah, Borderlands 2 is not easy to come by. Anything to say, Chris, as a as a newcomer to not only the podcast but the community as a whole? Yeah, and thank everyone for buying their game and trusting us and hope they enjoy their game and come back soon. We truly value your custom. Thanks for listening and come back again when episode five comes out. It'll be a few months away. But you ain't going to know that until you hear it. Yeah, we're sorry about it taking so long, but we are lazy. All right. Uh, a lady with a guitar will now see you out of the building. Thank you for listening to the Opium Pulses podcast. Come back soon. Anytime is good for you. Bring your friends to. Thank you for listening to the Opium Pulses podcast. The music was written and performed by Marie Dance. Come back next week. Blah 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 blah. Uh, why am I echoing? Echo. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, but we haven't been doing fuck all. We've given you a lovely store, so fuck off. Get off our back, yeah. Jesus. I'll cut that bit out. I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank off. you for listening to Opium Pulse's podcast. I am. A, my name is Lewis. What? I am his name. <laughs> name is Lewis. The <laughs> oh, fuck. And my, I am, my name is, who is Warren. We've both been taking too much drugs. <laughs> we just stop that.